Follow from here to good evening, leading our news bulletin for tonight. A first case of an expatriate home invasion was heard this morning in the island's local court sitting. The owner of Niue Honey was brought before the courts to answer a charge brought by Niue police following an incident in which he beat up another after an altercation in July. The defendant entered a guilty plea with the police submitting a brief summary of facts on the incident, bringing the charges under Section 240 of the New Act 1966 with additional recommendations that Mr. Corey pay an extra $200 to the New Police for the services the victim received. However, the justices of the peace that presided over the case decided to use Section 280 of the New Act 1966 to impose a one-year suspended sentence as well as $200 payable to New Full Hospital. Reasons of change is the impact a sentence will have on the defendant's business operations and the fact he travels to the island to perform his duties. Even though the defendant receives a one-year suspended sentence, the court advised that if the defendant reoffends, he will face Section 152 of the New Act 1966. Cyber safety is the focus of training workshops for police personnel this week as a team from the Australian Federal Police have arrived to conduct sessions on protecting communities from the impacts of cyber crime. This concept is the outcome of discussions from the Chiefs of Police in the Pacific discussions held last year that identified a gap in the need for training and responsibility from parents to children and police in the Pacific region and they also decided on a project to include the whole Pacific, now known as Cyber Safety Pacifica. Niue is one of the pilot project countries selected. Niue was a, a very positive choice for us. There was a number of reasons why we chose Niue. Niue is the pilot project for Cyber Safety Pacifica. And a couple of the reasons why we did choose Niue is that uh, there is the, the previous supply of one laptop per child into Niue. Nui is one of the few countries in the world that has free internet and it also has a containable uh, high school and primary school so to be effective in conducting a pilot we could speak to all children on the island to, to gauge their awareness and understanding of the vulnerabilities of the internet. NetSafe are very involved in this process. It's a very much a joint Australian-New Zealand initiative. Uh, NetSafe are actually looking at the legislation um, currently binding the Pacific in terms of not only cybercrime but also offences against children, grooming, procuring and sexual offences over the internet. The police of Nui are being provided with a two-day workshop on training that's relevant to not only uh, the use of the internet, protection of children by um, activities over the internet, but we're also giving them some information and training about travelling sex offenders and foreign predators. Uh, Nui has very much become a destination of choice for New Zealand and Australian travellers. And what we want to do is ensure that our police here in Nui are relatively equipped to deal with any possible um, activity revolving around these sex offenders. Building the capacity of the law enforcement agencies will enable the department to be on the alert with cyber crime and also to ensure that communities are aware of the risks associated with the internet. Based on today's sessions, the police force seemed to be keen to learn more and knew it needs to take on a community approach in this initiative. What the community here can do by protecting our children with the children of the children of today who are the adults of tomorrow, both parents, um, police and government workers can look at ways in which we can educate these children to ensure that the children grow up in a safe environment and they are able to then pass on those letters to their children. So this is a very much a long-term project. It's a project that um, we envisage will be rolled out over a five-year period. There is a network out there and that network is based around our transnational crime units. But I think what the important message is that we need that continual um, exposure and education because with that um, or without that, the, the community can't support the police and the police can't do their job effectively. So it is really, really important that the community understands the risks that uh, avail an island such as Niue and also understands the, the greater risk to the Pacific region. 
The hope is to cover 21 countries in the region for the duration of the project, which is for the next five years. The regional foreign economic ministers met in Apia Samoa in the 15th FEM meeting discussing different aspects of developments and cooperation in the region as well as globally and foremost addressing climate change issues. US Premier Honorable Toki Falangi said much of the issues discussed focused on economic prosperity and reflecting on climate change. He also acknowledged other islands close by that have increased development economically and their abilities to continue its economic growth substantially. Other topics discussed include the difficulties small island states face in accessing funds to address climate change impacts. Premier Talangi said it is important to cohesively tackle issues and all ministers at the meeting agreed to broadening the economic base. He said outcomes at the meeting will eventually be discussed at the Pacific Island Leaders Forum meeting in o Auckland in September. Plans are in motion to include the women's competition into the Kilikiki season for this year. Following a meeting held last Friday, those present showed a genuine interest to enable ladies to join in with the cricket hype. Due to, a number to the numbers, a decision was made at the meeting for a zone competition rather than villages, and rules from the men's competition will also apply with 30 people per team batting according to a set amount of time. The zones will include in Zone 1, Alupi North to Namukulu, Zone 2, Hikitawaki to La Kappa, Zone 3, Liku to Vaya, and Zone 4, Avaseli to Alupi South. Competition is expected to start on the 27th of August with two teams in each pool. There are two pools and it will be a short competition as Niue also plans to select a women's team to compete with a Niuean women's team from New Zealand due to arrive in October. And those are our news stories that we have for you tonight. We do hope that you can join us for our next news bulletin on Thursday.